All right, in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some really inexpensive defensive layers you can add to pretty much any Marauder build, and that's with Cleansing Water. Cleansing Water is the Chieftain's new passive that allows fire resistances to apply to Cold and Lightning at 50% of their value. You pair that up with Tempered by War, 50% of Lightning damage and cold damage is taken as fire but this also reduces your lightning and cold resistance which is no problemo because you can get you know really high on your fire resistance right now i have 350 percent fire resistances which fully caps out my cold and lightning and uh if you're using a fire skill it's even better because you can grab the Mastery here regenerate 1% of life for each 1% fire uncapped resistances, but I am not using a fire skill I'm using a deliberate low damage skill to show the effectiveness of these defensive layers Now one of the sneaky things about the formless flame is that minus 200 fire damage taken from hits and all of my damage aside from chaos is being converted to fire to some extent so that means that every hit I'm taking is going to be subtracting 200 damage from that hit pretty much and that kind of a mechanic allows you to use iron reflexes without the biggest downside of iron reflexes the biggest downside of iron reflexes is when you get surrounded by a lot of different enemies and you're getting hit with these little hits that are like 500 each and you have 10 enemies that are all hitting you for 500 damage and it kills you now each one of those 500 hits is going to have 200 subtracted from it so each one of those hits is only going to be 300 and you may survive you still don't want to allow yourself to be overrun by enemies unless you're doing some type of blood notch tech or you got a lot of recoup neither which i have a lot of in this build i only have one recoup node here on my ring which is 14 percent of damage recouped is life and that is it there's no other recoup that i have now my setup is a split arrow setup which is going to be doing no damage i think it's like 500k damage that i will be doing with this build i am not going to be doing a lot of damage and with that i have a mana forge and a mana forge setup this one has ensnaring arrow and frenzy and this one has puncture the build is not important i mostly want to show off the defensive layers and how inexpensive they are and i'm using iron reflexes because you shouldn't use iron reflexes ever unless you're an armor stacker even then it has massive downsides in the fact that if you get shotgunned or surrounded every hit's going to hit you because you do not evade anything even this build if i took that off it would probably be superior but right now i got 44,000 armor so the physical hits are not going to hit very strong i have 89 maximum fire resistance because of purity of fire and double molten's ones marks and you know the, this tree here which is really strong and then this tree here which is really strong you plus one to all plus one to fire plus two to all which puts the cold and fire i mean cold and lightning to 78 and then it's going to be boosted and 50 percent of that's going to be taken as fire so you effectively have like 84 to 83 fire i mean lightning and cold resistances because it's being taken as fire and you get your armor get a little bit of that physical damage taken as fire there and with the lethal pride if you're lucky on your drop uh, you can get some of this five percent of physical damage from hits taken as fire and i got three on this one um, i don't know where this came from i think i dropped it doing a five way uh, but i have three so that's 15 percent of physical damage is taken as fire so a lot of my damage is being taken as fire and i have a build that does very little damage so i'll be getting hit a lot I'll be trying to stress the build as much as possible to put myself into situations where I should be dead. Oh, and I mentioned I have Aspect of Carnage, so I'm taking 10% more damage. So this build, by all means, oh, I didn't even talk about the prices. So this, the reason it's so inexpensive is nobody's using this, I don't think. Um, what is it, Control D? Uh, this is 60 chaos this is 60 chaos you can get the cheapest version of this is like 30 that's all you really need is the cheapest you don't need to go ham with it and then uh this is like 20 right we have to get rid of that like 10 20 you want to get pretty high on that fire because it is actually pretty important to get that minus fire damage so it's just very inexpensive to run this type of a setup and if you're doing a real build and by a real build a real synergistic build 
and you have a lot of uh, fire resistance and you're doing fire damage, you can then take a fire mastery node, which is going to give you life regeneration per second equal to your overcap fire resistance. The highest I've ever gotten on one of my builds was 690 fire resistance overcapped. So I was getting like 600 life regeneration per second from that mastery. So it is a lot of life regeneration per second. Now this is a very low damage build. And uh, anyone else running a Berserker in this type of a setup would be dead a thousand times already. Every one of these hits is hitting me. I have no evasion. So all these hits are landing. But they're not really doing too much because every hit is being subtracted by 200. And I just have good defensive layers. For very, very, very low cost. None of my gear has spell suppression on it. I'm only grabbing spell suppression on those two nodes and making my spell suppression lucky. Which probably puts my chance to suppress damage from spells at like 80%. You see that? He just blew up on me and I just, I just took it. Like a champ. Now, if I had a build that did a lot of damage, I wouldn't really be getting hit. Because, you know, the, be the best way to play a Berserker is Glass Cannon. You just pump up the damage so high to the point that nobody even kills you. No one even gets to see what you look like because you kill them as soon as you see them. But I am doing Berserker the wrong way by going low damage, high defensive, just to show how good this defensive layer is. And this is just scratching the surface. This is the bare minimum. The bare minimum is the helmet, the chieftain passive, purity of fire, and that's it. Oh, and tempered by war, obviously. Now, tempered by war is better than uh, melding of the flesh, because melding of the flesh gives you minus four to all resistances. It also reduces your fire resistances, but tempered by war does not reduce your fire resistances, and it doesn't reduce your max resistances. So you don't have to work as hard to pump up your maximum fire resistances. In fact, if you have aura effect, if you do like an aura stacker build using these defensive layers, uh, you're not going to need to do any of that. Uh, because the uh, increased aura of effect is going to pump up your purity of fire to give you more maximum fire resistances. So this is a metamorph that is just going to town on me, hitting me all over the place. Let's take a look at my defenses as I'm running through. 52,000 armor, no chance to evade. Um, I'm going to try to die deliberately on this boss here. And you can just uh, hold still and just take it. Look at all that fire hitting me. And my life regeneration is super, super low. So if I hold still and there's fire damage over time or damage over time, I can die as you saw right there. Uh, but if you're doing this build correctly, uh, right now my life regeneration rate, I'm not using vitality or nothing. I'm just getting whatever life regeneration rate I have. So my defensive life regeneration rate is only 383. So if I had a petrified blood set up with vitality, uh, that wouldn't have killed me in the slightest. But as you saw, it takes quite a bit to get to the death state. Let's just hang out, not do anything. Now I really like this build in terms of how fun it is to play, but I am not a bow player, so it is not finely tuned, so I don't even really want to show it because it, it's trash but if you got the time and you're a bow player i'll put the pob in there and you can tell me what i'm doing wrong because i am doing things wrong no doubt about it but the 
bulk of this video is talking about the defensive layers, not so much the build. But I did have this bow and this uh, quiver, so I decided to just do split arrow. I wanted to do a demo of the defenses, and I figured a split arrow berserker is the perfect build to demo the defenses. Because split arrow's damage is garbage. It is really bad. Uh, split arrow needs a little bit of love, I think. But I really like Mana Forged. Um, so I might try to do some type of fire arrow instead of split arrow. Or burning arrow. I think they call it burning arrow. Because uh, burning arrow has a really high base damage, where split arrows is like 125, burning arrow is 300. But split arrow, I mean, especially on this map, it really clears the waves. And it's kind of fun. I'm, I'm low on all of this low currency, so that's actually what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing my Atlas strategy, which is very high density. Right now I got 106% increased monster pack size. And that is purely for fun, because you don't get more loot with more pack size anymore. That's a, a blast from PoE past, juicing up maps and getting big pack size. And that doesn't work very well anymore. That is not the way to get currency. So this is not a currency strategy. It's a fun strategy. And the damage is good enough on this build to the point where uh, you can clear everything pretty quickly. The bosses get a little nutty. If you want to get crazy on the bosses, you can do gem swap or you can even do a bow swap. Do a bow with faster attack speed and maybe something like chaining or something crazy like that. Extra pierce and then weapon swap when you get to the boss to do a barrage setup, a barrage support setup. See, right now I am either ignited or poisoned, and damage over time took me out there. Because damage over time is going... You know what? I'm not going to go back to that boss. That's a whole lot of running for a little bit of effort. A little bit of reward. Let's just focus on this boss here, and let's get going. I'm going to put barrage on, because barrage is kind of fun. Let's replace returning arrow. Do this on a barrage setup. Uh, I'm not going to clear nearly as fast with barrage. But you're going to be able to, like, see me get hit more. Well, that's pretty nasty. Forgot how much Barrage slow down your attack and you're kind of stuck in a place for a little bit. Now, as I was saying, uh, if you really wanted to set this up, you can get damn close to unkillable with this. It's not going to be the best defensive layers, but the other defensive layers are very, you know what, that's untenable using barrage support I'm actually have to clear out enemies so I'll just put that on for the boss to demo it just because it looks cool There's no reason to stand on top of them. I don't have a uh, point blank support or point blank sign. Some double curse and being able to do the mark. I forget what it's called. Projectile mark. Whatever it's called. Projectile mark. I'm just going to call it that. Uh, put the projectile mark on them. Uh, it would be really nice. But I don't have double curses. And if you pair this up with like a jug, oh man, you get you get so tanky. Uh, mana regeneration is a bit of a problem with this build because you need to use mana in order to cast the other two. And so you can't use life tap, at least not fully. So, you know, this costs 32 mana per cast. And that's about where you want it. Ideally, I'd want to get rid of one of my setups and just get rid of the puncture setup, because the puncture setup's pretty useless. It's going to do a little extra damage, but I don't really have too any uh, damage over time stats. I just have physical cluster jewels, which are going to help for bleeding damage. But the bleeding damage is minuscule and pretty pointless. 
So if I was to turn this into a real build instead of just a demonstration for the defensive layers, I'd probably do that and just have a six link mana forge build that uses three different arrows or two different arrows and then applies a bunch of curses. I would do frenzy for the frenzy charges and then ensnaring arrow to increase damage from projectiles and then uh, curse on hit or something like that. All right, let's put on Barrage because it is fun. And this big boy is going to pound me. And I'm going to let him pound me. Here, pound me. Oh, you missed. You loser. There you go. Pound me. Oh, yeah. I like it. He should be able to kill me. There we go. I'm not in there where it is. There it is. I'm not invulnerable. Uh, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I might become more invulnerable if I got rid of that bad boy. Let's put that and let's just get alive real quick. I, well, I won't be invulnerable still, but it is better to have dodge than to not have dodge with my low level of life regeneration. If I had more life regeneration, obviously that would be much better. But my low level of life regeneration... Being able to dodge a hit or two will allow your life to pop back up. See, you would think my, my defensive layers and the cost of my gear was way higher than it actually is. Given that demonstration of a berserker with aspect of carnage just taking those hits. And that is all due to these defensive layers, which I feel are very powerful for the price of almost nothing. Now that is the demo of this build. I'm going to run one more map that I see right there just for the giggles, just to do a little, little bit more here on this. Let's put that back on. We have an alleyways. Hopefully we get big pack size. Pack size 25, pretty decent pack size. Elemental weakness, I wonder if that's gonna put my resistances low enough to actually have an impact. Let's see. 85. Elemental weakness. It put me to 77. Which is right about perfect. So you can run elemental weakness maps. And again, uh, this build isn't a good build. It's fun if you like Split Arrow. I love Split Arrow. Too bad Split Arrow does no damage, but it is a lot of fun. And if you put Wake and Chain on Split Arrow, right now I'm using Returning Projectile just because it's it's new. But I put, could put a Wake and Chain on, and then we'd be clearing screens for days. I honestly like cleansing water better than the one that sets your maximum resistances to your fire resistance. Because all of that free resistances that you're getting is just spectacular. It is so easy to gear with that node. You just grab fire, you just grab chaos. It's, it's glorious. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go back to not using it. When I'm a marauder anyways. Because it's just so good. I like it so much. Now, obviously, it's not that strong for in-game. Because you can get your resistances at in-game all over the place. It's super easy to get resistances at in-game. But if you're not a Bala, if you're not a rich PoE player, and you're just kind of a poor scrub... You got like five divine in your stash and you're like what do i do with this five divine i want to build that i can run regular t16s and not have to worry about dying very often i mean i can clear it pretty pretty easily just like i'm doing now not really dying i'm clearing it pretty easy i mean i'm not stressed out i got one hand on the mouse and the other hand is in unknown places you know just warming up down there because it's getting a little chilly Winter is coming. 
And you can just, you can just chill. Just, just hang out. Have a good time. Throw on some music. Um, run through some maps. Get your minor currencies. Fight your triple bosses. Which I think they're on, like, concentrated. Oh, no, Maven. Ugh. I'm not going to rerun through there. I got hit by something big. Hit by something big. Uh, video is over on a death like that. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick highlight of the gear. Not that this is a build or anything that anyone should replicate, but if you're interested in what I'm using, I'll do a quick little highlight here. I'm doing a little bit of a rough losses coil. It's probably the wrong decision. It's probably better to get the rage belt or any other belt, but I like rough losses coil. And uh, because I was trying to incorporate puncture in here, uh, I figured Roth Losses Coil would get me some lucky bleeds, some lucky punctures, and it, probably a pretty good choice, but may, maybe not. But anyways, that's the gear. I use this pair of boots that I have because the 20% cooldown recovery rate is really nice for mana arrow support, mana forge arrow support. It's really nice because you just get 20% increased cooldown reduction just like that. And it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, so anyways, that's the video. Recap, if you're poor and you want strong defenses, go pick up some of these Forbidden Flames, get yourself a Tempered War, throw on Formless Flame, and Purity of Fire. Now let's take a look at what it looks like without determination. I'm not really pumping armor. In fact, a lot of my gear, my armor is... my body armor is split between armor and evasion my gloves are split be split between armor and evasion my helmet has armor and my boots are pure evasion so i'm not really getting a lot of armor so let's uh put that uh if we wanted to refund this and then put this back on if we take a look at my defenses i mean my armor is pretty jacked without petrified blood on i mean without determination and if you wanted to get crazy with your armor for the cheap um, banner, and let's just assuming you're not using Dread Banner, and you throw on this banner, bump, bump, bump. Oh, well, I was kind of hoping for a bigger effect than that. And let's throw Grace on instead of Haste, just to see how big we get this bad boy. I'm running Haste because it's fast. It's like the worst uh, aura I could use, especially because Determination is a thing. And Determination would do so much more damage, but I like the movement speed of Haste. So now we really got some big boy armor numbers for no reason. I mean, for a little effect. A little effect, I can't even talk. I should have just gave up a long time ago. Let's pop some Flask here. You know, 100k armor, pretty easy. In fact, let's let's grab, let's let's get rid of this flask here and grab an evasion flask. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna get rid of it and let's grab another evasion. Wait, no, I need an armor flask now. An armor flask, armor, armor, evasion. I need that second evasion. And uh, let's go into alleyways. Actually, no, let's just do a quick delve just so we can see this armor when I'm, like, pumping it. When I'm pumping it. defense a hundred and fifty thousand that is a lot of armor and if you're doing an aura stacker an armor stacking aura stacker there is 100 percent an extremely powerful build in this combo 100%. I have no doubts that there is a very powerful build that uses this combo in some way, shape, or form. It's likely an aura stacking armor stacker. 
So if you are a crafter and you want something uh, a little bit different, there you go. Ugh. Still can't hang out though. You still can't hang out. Because you will die. Because you're taking every hit. But if you got more than 14 recoup and more than um, 300 life regeneration per second, uh, you can hang out and you can take those hits because it ain't going to do shits. All right. That's the video. I will leave it there. Later. And then there's 